Well, hello, writers. Welcome to episode number 243 of How Do You Write? I'm Rachel Heron. I am way thrilled that you are here today as I'm talking to Emma Straub. Emma Straub is a blockbuster. Uh, she owns an incredible bookstore in New York, and she wrote All Adults Here, which is a book that I absolutely loved. So it's going to be one of those episodes in which I quell and fangirl. Um, and she's such a beautiful writer and a beautiful person. And I know that you are going to enjoy this interview. Oh my gosh, you can hear me stumbling. I didn't even prepare notes of what I'm going to talk about because I am so tired. Uh, the house closed escrow. So we have sold the house and we're moving to New Zealand really happening. I think I wasn't willing to really believe it until the house sold. Uh, and we were so lucky that our house hit the market, sold and closed escrow in three weeks and six days. It did not even go to four weeks. It was all done and dusted. I'm still in the house. We've got another um, 10 days here in the house that we got back from the new owners. I'm sitting in a house that is not my own. Uh, it's a very strange feeling when it's been yours for 15 years and now it is not. And I was out there this morning watering, not my garden, before the heat of the day. <laughs> it, it's very strange. Um, but that's been really exciting. And so that was a couple days ago that happened. So I guess now we have to move to New Zealand. So we're doing that. Uh, let's see what else is going on around here. I am still somehow continuing to work and it's going well. I am working on the revision of A Life in Stitches. Um, adding a couple of essays and you might be able to hear that my voice is super tired. I am doing the audiobook narration for it, which I'm exceedingly excited about. And it's going great. Uh, the publisher never, I think I may have mentioned this last week, forgive me, but the publisher never did an audiobook of this book, which was ridiculous. And it was something I was so irritated with them about because knitters and crafters listen to audiobooks before the rest of the world embraced the new audio revolution the crafters had always been there and they always wanted this book in audiobook so now that I got the rights back I get to do it and now that we're in this house with empty closets I took the closet furthest away from the street I lined it um, with moving blankets using this method that is really working well and I will just say it here really quickly I'm using command hooks to hang uh, cafe curtain rings with little hooks on them uh, with little uh, what are they called like pinchers clasps and then connect I am connecting them to moving blankets so everything is removable which is important because it's all fresh paint in that closet but when I'm done I just unhook the blankets take off the command strip because those come off clean and then it's like I was never in there and I have this awesome audio booth setup. It sounds great. And I am truly enjoying the experience of reading this book. I'm what I'm really enjoying is the experience of making this book that was good. It was really good. I was proud of it. But I'm making it a little bit better. And I get to use my voice to bring it to life. And that is just one of my favorite things to do. Y'all know that. You all hear me extemporaneously and speaking too quickly and stumbling over my words. But when I get to do books and actual really, really reading of what I've written, it's one of the things I love to do best. I'm going to tell you a tiny, tiny little story. I was in college. I was not even in college. I'm in community college at this point because I just couldn't bear to leave my mama and go to a four-year college yet. I wasn't ready. So I went to this community college and I was taking English one you know, probably the very first thing. And we read in that uh, a story that I'd read a million times before, Steinbeck's uh, Chrysanthemums. And it's a story that I love. And this kind of bored professor, we were going to read it in class out loud. And we were going to move around the room. And, you know, one person would read a couple paragraphs and then the next one, would, he would, you know, move it and somebody else would read. Somebody read the first few paragraphs. I took over two paragraphs in and then after I was done doing my part and I kind of paused to see if he wanted me to stop he said do you want to continue and so I read a couple more and then I remember this so clearly I'm like you know 18 but 
he said to the class, he said, do you want her to continue? And they all, they said, I heard them like do this noise. It was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And maybe they were just saying that because they didn't want to read out loud. But I loved reading that story out loud with emphasis, with passion, with emotion. And when I was done, there was a silence and then they clapped. And then afterwards, a woman followed me outside and she said that it had made her cry. And I remember thinking, I'm reading words that I love and I'm putting my own expression into them. And how cool is that? And now I get to do that in my own closet, in the back, reading essays that are important to me, reading fiction, reading fiction. I don't know if I'm ever going to be ready to do that, um, but reading things, something that I wrote that I love, that I'm passionate about. So that's been really, really fun. And I'm getting a lot of work done on it. I'm hoping to finish it. <laughs> I'm not hoping to finish it. I need to finish it by the end of next week uh, because then we will be getting rid of everything in the house, including the staged furniture. There will be nothing in the closets, including a recording studio. So I record this. I'm recording this on Thursday. By the time I talk to you next Thursday, I hope that I have it done. I'm pushing it a little bit because I'm still continuing edits. I haven't quite finished that either. So I'm kind of editing and then recording and then editing and then recording. <laughs> and it's fun. And I guess it's giving me a place to put all this nervous energy that is coming out my pores. So um, that's what's going on around here. Let us jump into the interview with Emma Straub. I hope that you really enjoy it half as much as I enjoyed talking to her. Um, she's truly awesome. So I wish you, my friends, Happy writing, and we will talk soon. All right. Well, I could not be more pleased to welcome to the show today, Emma Straub. Hello, Emma. Oh, hi. 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 Listeners, we have just gone deep uh, before the show on things like New Zealand and um, most importantly, cats. So I, Emma's already my best friend, uh, but but she's not your best friend yet. She will be after this interview. Let me give you a little introduction so you know about her. Uh, Emma Straub is the New York Times bestselling author of four novels, All Adults Here, Modern Levels, Lovers, not levels, The Vacationers, and Laura Lamont's Life in Pictures, and the short story collection, Other People We Married. Her books have been published in 20 countries. She and her husband own Books Are Magic, an independent bookstore in Brooklyn, New York. Welcome, Emma. Well, thanks for having me. I'm so excited. I've been so excited to talk to you because Modern Lovers has just been one of those books in my TBR pile forever and I haven't gotten around to it. And I apologize for that. That is going to be immediately <laughs> remedied because your publicist sent me a net galley for the upcoming paperback um, of all adults here. And I am in love, Emma. Your book is exactly what I needed to read right now. I fell into it with such excitement and gratitude. And so it's one of those things, it's one of those books, listeners, that in the first scene, you're like, no, yep, here I am, 100% committed. I'm not going to touch another book until this book is done. And in fact, I've kind of been having a crappy day and I promised myself after we talked, I'm getting in bed Aww. with your book and I'm not getting out for the rest of the afternoon. Yay. <laughs> so first and foremost, thank you for um, being my new favorite writer. I don't mean to scare you. I <laughs> Oh. But you really are amazing. You're amazing. It's going to take way more than that to scare me. <laughs> Good. Oh, that's wonderful. Um, you'll hear my cat soon. That might work. Uh, okay. So let's talk about your writing process. This is a show for writers and we love to talk about process. Um, I'm kind of a junkie for that question that we kind of roll our eyes when we get asked, but then we love to answer it. You know, what is your writing process? Can you tell me what your writing process is now? Like now during the weirdness of the world. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so, so when I was a youth, um, I used to be precious. I used to be precious about my writing process. And I would only write in bed like Virginia Woolf. And oh, I love that. <laughs> with a cat or two. And... I needed total silence and et cetera. Um, and then I had children and uh, it turned out that that was a lot harder to come by. Yeah, I've, I've heard this rumor. Yeah. And by the time I was on my, um, by the time I was on my third 
novel, when I was writing Modern Lovers, I was writing it like on the subway, like literally anywhere, literally anywhere where there were no small children <laughs> that were related to me. I did. Um, and now, you know, so for the first, let's say six months of the pandemic, I didn't write a word because I have a five-year-old and a seven-year-old and all of a sudden I was doing school while my husband was at the bookstore keeping that going. Um, Which is no small feat this no, last, last year. Yeah. I mean, you know, it's funny. We like, sometimes we get into like, like um, arguments about like who was more miserable. <laughs> Who, who usually wins? I mean, that's the thing. It's, it's a problem. I mean, I would say I, I would, you do, I would, I would yeah. say I win, but, but he was like, like, I would say my like emotional labor was more intense, yeah. but he was doing like, like more physical labor which was intense yeah. in a different way. I don't, I mean, it was, it was bad all the way around is what we ultimately come to usually um, depending on who's having a worse day. But so for this first, you know, from, from March until like September, October, I didn't write a word because I, I had no minutes in which to do so. Um, but then in the fall, my so one of my kids was in school five days a week starting in September and the other one started totally remote and then has it has like worked its way up so now they're in school four days a week um god it's so boring I'm sorry it's this like is not so boring this is fascinating oh god. Oh, but um, I, I have a, I have a, just a quick question. What kind of writer are you when you're not writing? Are you a grumpy one? Or are you just like kind of bobbing along? Um, I would say I'm bobbing along mostly because, but, but, but unhappily, like I'm bobbing <laughs> along unhappily because I really love to work. I really love to work. Like I love to write. It's my favorite thing. Like it's it the shows. Job. Oh, it you. shows in your writing. Thank yeah. you. Um, but yeah, so okay, so so basically, once school was like reintroduced as a concept, and um, and we hired a wonderful, beautiful babysitter who could help. Um, then uh, my like professional life started to seem possible again, yeah. and um. And then I, I started writing and yeah, I mean, I, what I'm writing now is, is so wild. Um, it's so different. And I, and I think like, I think that this is, I think it's going to be really, really interesting to, to be a reader, um, in the next, let's say five years. I have thought the same thing. Yeah. It is because like, I mean, like if, I am writing what I'm writing. Like, it's gonna like I'm writing a book. I'm writing a book um, that is time travel. It has time travel, and like if like I, who knows? Like, just people are gonna be writing some wild, <laughs> wild stuff, and it is gonna be really exciting and interesting to to see how everyone is like processing the trauma of this year, yeah. you know? Yeah. I'm, I'm at once right now, ba trying to balance two proposals. One is the happiest, most uplit book I've ever written. And one is the darkest book I've ever heard talk about <laughs> and in uh, up to, and including like my wife won't let me talk about the book in the house. Oh my God. <laughs> so, my God. That's going to be a problem. I think, oh yeah, that might be a problem, but I think we are really just, we're, we're, we're all writing those peaks and valleys where, where did you write before all of this happened? Were you an outside cafe writer or were you an inside? Have you had to adjust to that? 
I, I, I have always been an inside yeah. person, but, but last, I guess I wrote most of all adults here in a co-working space mm. that I could walk to. And it, it was, it was, it was perfect because it got me out of the house and I could drop my kids off at school and then keep walking. And it was like a nice mm. walk from home. Um, I had a co-working space for three weeks before the pandemic. Oh, I had man. just made the decision to do it. And oh, I would take man. Bart there and take the train. It was like, you know, two stops. Yeah. Um, and it, but did yours survive? Mine closed. Yeah. No, mine closed too. And like, you know, I think that like, I mean, one good side, if we can call it that, um, is that like, I, I am now able to work at home. Yeah. Like I would say before I would have said, oh, I can't work at home, but I, I can. And, and I do. And actually I bought something recently, just a couple of months ago that really changed my whole game. Tell me it was an alpha smart. I don't know what that is. Oh, that's a, that's a different topic for a different day. Tell me what yours is. I'll be next. (laughs) Whatever that is. Um, Sounds like a robot that writes my books for me. Yeah. That, that, that I, that I would like to buy. I can't afford that one actually. Yeah, I'm looking for that one, but I bought myself a treadmill for my, my, and an adjustable desk. So I just walk on my treadmill. I don't go faster than that because, bleh, but I love to walk and I just, I don't really have time ever for anything. Um, but yeah. now I can, I can walk for, you know, a half an hour or an hour maybe, and then sit for a while and walk and sit. And then I can write, I'm going slow enough that I can write, I can type. And it's that's great. brilliant. I have wanted, I, I, I will admit that I made one once with a cheap um, treadmill I got off Amazon and it was not a good one. And then I tried to <laughs> in, drill a shelf into it. It was just a really a bad idea all around. And I kept falling off of it, but oh. I had a dream of having the real kind. So it really, you really can write at it. Yeah. And I mean, oh, my, that's like, awesome. like it, it's not even like the real kind, like, so Ann Patchett, who is like my sister friend. Oh. She's amazing. That's like all one thing, but mine is like a little Frankenstein-y, but who cares? I just bought like, it's not the cheapest treadmill, but it's, it's, it's low profile. So like, it's really made for people to like shove under the couch or whatever. Mm -hmm. Um, And so it wasn't crazy expensive and it has made my life better. So I mean, I think that moving to New Zealand, like, is already going to just improve things like 3000%. I think it will. But but if you want to just like touch it up, even just like a scooch more. I literally just had the thought, could I buy a cheap treadmill here? Because electronics are expensive there. Would I be able to get a step down converter in order to run the mm-hmm. voltage needed for the treadmill? And then I stopped that brain thought and then went back to yeah. listening to you. Yeah. But yes, I think that that could really, really work. What is your biggest challenge when it comes to writing? Um, my own brain. I mean, I, I would say, I mean, it's not fair to blame my children, right? <laughs> you, um, I don't have kids, so you can blame them. Um, I don't have that, that, that feeling that you shouldn't. Yeah. I mean, I, I, I mean, I guess, I guess the, the biggest roadblock is just that I have so many other things yeah. that require my attention. I like cannot imagine. Where I've, I've like, we've, we've, this last year has been excruciating obviously, but the one thing that, that I feel really good about is that we are a better, more efficient just like better functioning bookstore now Mm -hmm. than we were a year ago, Mm -hmm. even before the pandemic. And, and what that means for, for me is just that I, they need me there less. That's awesome. Which is really, really, really good. Um, Especially, you know, since the fall, 
because I've been writing and I am on deadline and, you know, God knows how long it's going to take me to figure out um, how to edit this time travel novel. <laughs> um, so, you know, I need, I need all the time I can have, I can get. Um, yeah. 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 What is your biggest joy when it comes to writing? Hmm. Um, I guess, huh. I mean, I love, I love a lot of things about it. I love when it slips in, like when it slips from, from, from feeling like okay so I have this woman who's like 39 you know from like when like making yeah. conscious decisions yeah. to um to feeling like they're people I love that I love that feeling does that happen to you in a first draft or is it does it happen more in later drafts yeah. Yeah. I think it, it happens in the first draft, like, and at some point, you know, like it's, it, it's not always the same, but I like, but with all adults here, with all adults here, what happened was that like, I thought it was about when I started, I thought that the book was really just about Astrid, who's the, you know, the matriarch of this family, her daughter, Porter and her, uh, granddaughter Cecilia like I thought it was really just about them but then all these other family members kept to like kept walking in you know and I mean it's like the same thing happened when I was writing Modern Lovers that like I thought it was about this one family and then like the family next door basically I like kept like walking over there and I was like okay, fine. It's about them too. Like, I get it. I get it. Brain. Oh, and it's just what my brain wants to read. Are you um, a fan of Eleanor Lippman? You know, I am. I am. I just, I, what did I just read? Oh my God. Something. I can't remember. A book by her. There, there are, I have levels in my brain and they're, they're, I don't know if they're color coded or numerical or whatever, but when I need like when I need soothing in a way, I go to Eleanor Lippman, but you just took one step above. You're, <laughs> you're, you're, you're above her now. But but I keep thinking about her and while I'm reading her books and the way that family is very real and very messy, but still there's just, it's just underpinned with um, with love. And yeah. that's, that's something that is so hard to pull off um, organically and realistically. And it's amazing so speaking of your writing chops um can you share a craft tip with our audience of any sort oh geez louise okay this is hard um uh i mean this is like i don't know th this uh, apologies if this is too broad abroad uh, but my my number one tip for for people who are aspiring or emerging writers um is to finish it is yeah. to finish it whether it's a story or a screenplay or a novel um perfection is a lie and like a dumb one like i don't know i mean i think there are a couple of people in the world like when i was in i remember when i was in my mfa program Kevin Brockmeyer, who mm. is an amazing writer, mm -hmm. came and talked to us and we asked him a question sort of like that or about his, no, it was about his, his process. And he said something and like, I could see the, <laughs> like our, our faculty, like, you know, basically <laughs> drawing their, like a hand and a line across their necks at him. <laughs> Because he said what he does is he writes one sentence until it's perfect. Oh no. And then he moves on to the second sentence and he works on that sentence until it's perfect. But it, you know, it has to be perfect with the first sentence too. And he just goes on that way until he's written the whole, the whole thing. And then he's done. Oh my God. And Which is 
Which is what every new writer thinks is the only way to write. Right. And like, to me, that's just plain impossible. Like, absolutely. I just, um, yeah, I mean, I, I was born with, um, I don't know if it's just like a, like, um, I don't know what it is like a two like a one like teaspoon too much confidence or something like I am always like oh, I'm done okay that's it and then I have to go and fix things but like I just don't think I don't think there's any way to make something good unless you finish it like it's yeah. just it's just, it's so easy to psych yourself out and be like, oh, it's not going to be good or whatever. Like to, to like buy into the myth of perfection when like that doesn't matter. If like, if you're, if you're choosing between, you know, having some, having something be perfect I don't know. I mean, I guess like if you're Donna Tart, right, and your goal is to publish a book every decade, then like maybe that is your goal. You know what I mean? It is, like, but I would I would even argue with that 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 there there are a lot of people who want to be Donna Tart and they aren't finishing their right. books. I always I always say if uh, revising as you go is only it, your method if you are finishing books. Right. There you, yeah. there there you go. And Kevin Kevin's got it, Donna's got it, but most people don't. Yeah. Yeah. I, love I mean that. It's just it's so it is so hard. It is so hard. Yeah. Perfect. And I love that craft tip and I think we cannot hear it enough. Um, what thing in your life affects your writing in a surprising way? Um, God, this is a hard question because I, I feel like everything that really affects my writing, um, is not at all surprising because it's like, you know, some thing that has some large gravitational pull on my time. Um, okay, Can I so ask you a pointed um, Rachel directed question then? Yes, please. Uh, how do your cats affect your writing? Cause I really want to, <laughs> cause I really want to know. Um, well, right now two out of three are snoozing right next to me. I, you know, I would say, here's what I would say right now when I'm on my treadmill, it helps me. Okay. I have a real answer. So okay, good. <laughs> it used to be, it used to be that if killer, who is my 16 year old angel Perfect cat of, of a possum. Yeah. So if killer was on my lap, then it would, I could write for longer because right. what I'm going to do, move her. No, right. And now I, that's how I feel about my treadmill that like, if I'm writing and I'm walking, like, Oh. I, I am a I am a fidgety yeah me too fidgeter snacking like I hair you know, twisting I, glasses adjusting like, yeah. I probably need yeah. a glass of water I probably have to pee I probably need a snack I probably need to whatever you know um but if I'm walking on my treadmill then I'm I want to mm. do that so. So I would say uh, treadmill and cats both are anchoring devices. I love that. And as a person who struggles with ADHD, I think I have to get a treadmill. I think oh, it's yeah. like, oh, yeah. I think it's necessary. Yeah. Okay. And I, I'm going to throw this question at you. And um, if your brain goes completely blank, that's fine. But what is the best book you've read recently and why did you love it? And this is impossible to write, ask of a writer and it's doubly impossible to ask of a writer who owns a bookstore. So I apologize. Um, yeah, but, but, you know, I mean, I, I can, I can do this. Okay. My brain just goes blank when this comes up. Um, okay. Um, 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 so right now I'll just tell you what I'm, what I am reading and what I just finished. Okay. Yes, please. So what I'm reading right now is the galley of Colson Whitehead's new book, Ooh. Harlem Shuffle, which comes out in October. Nice. 
and it's um you know he's he had two really emotionally intense books in a row and I can see him having fun oh good I'm so glad to hear that I loved his I loved his poker book for that reason yeah the poker book and yeah. Sag Harbor and even zone one like I mean he's written so many like he they're all bangers you know yeah. like there are no skips but um but yeah it's a fun one so that I'm reading and enjoying um my friend Ashley Ford has a memoir that's coming out in July. I believe it's July. I, July. I can't wait for that. I cannot wait for that uh, one. It's wonderful. It's wonderful. And, you know, I feel really lucky. Um, I mean, it's sort of an absurd position to be in really where like, where this has happened to me so many times, but I have so many friends um, you know, who are, who are people who I've made friends with as an adult who then write memoirs. And it's like, it's like, um, getting in it like a machine and like going back and seeing someone's whole childhood or like seeing what the way they are. And it's, it's, it's amazing. Um, really being dipped, really dipped inside their brains. And how cool is it to be dipped inside Ashley Ford's? Like that yeah. is amazing. Yeah. So that is terrific. Um, and then I also just read this middle grade book um, called Middletown by a woman named Sarah Moon. And I don't read much middle grade. I mean, my kids are five and seven. And so I read a lot. I mean, I read a lot of picture books and I read a lot of sort of like younger, like younger chapter books, but, but this sort of like, you know, third grade through like eighth grade kind of reading zone, I really haven't dip my toe in since I was that age and this book is really good and it made me cry and it's about oh. sisters and what's really nice about it is that it's um it's about these two sisters whose mother is an alcoholic and it's about them sort of taking care of themselves and but like nothing really bad happens to them which is nice yeah yeah and also one of the two sisters who's in like the eighth grade seventh or eighth grade in the book is gay but it's it's not it's not a plot point love it's love not that. it's not her coming out story it's um it's it's just you know, one part of who she is. And like, there is like a sweet, like sort of first romance. Tell me part. the name of this one again. It's called Middletown. Middletown. The writer's name Sarah Moon. Um, and I love Sarah for many reasons. And one of which is that her, her daughter goes to the same school as my kids. And so I see her at preschool drop off, which means she's like one of like only a few grownups who I interact <laughs> with out in the world. Um, and she, like me, is the daughter of a writer. And so we have a lot in common. Her mom is Amy Bloom, who's oh wow, White Houses was a scorcher. Yes. Um wow. Yeah. Nice, yeah. nice lineage there. Yeah. yeah. Oh my goodness. Oh, you have really good answers, Emma. Okay. I'm going <laughs> to ask you the last question and then I'm going to say goodbye to you, but please stay on the line just for a second afterwards. Um, can you give us your log line pitch for all adults here? Yes. Darn so, it, I said it wrong. My wife always says I say that wrong. Adults, not adults. Say it. Listen, this is your show. You <laughs> right? anything however you want okay thank you thank you your wife she is not the boss here i was practicing it last night all adults all adults because i do have some weird leftover new zealand kiwi accent things that come out 
and it just came well, out. Well, so. it's time to lean into that. I know. Um, okay, so all adults here, or as I like to say, all adults here. Thank uh, you, Laura. <laughs> is, um, it's an intergenerational, multi-generational family story that takes place in the beautiful Hudson Valley in New York. Um, it's about a sort of a, you know, slightly fastidious matriarch and her three um, adult children who are each fucked up in their own ways. Can I say that? Yes, so you can. And then um, her granddaughter, Cecilia, who has just been sort of shipped up from New York City where she's gotten into a little bit of trouble at her school. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's really about um, making mistakes and and figuring out who you are and um, forgiveness. It's mm. you know, hopefully it's funny. I, that it's... It makes it sound, that makes it sound really serious. Which like there are there, some parts of it are. Um, it's hilarious yeah. from jump. Like no, no spoilers, but a lady gets hit by a bus and it is the funniest shit I've ever read. Um, plus, plus the end of that first scene, I was like, oh my God, Astrid, go, go with yourself. So I cannot recommend this more highly to people. Please pick this up. Um, when does it come out in paperback? Is it already out in paperback? Yeah, today, uh, yesterday. Oh, April. congratulations. Yep, thank happy, you. Thank happy you. paper birth birthday. Um, thank, you. thank you so much for being on the show, Emma. This is such a huge treat for me. My pleasure and have a good move. Good thank luck. You. Thank you, thank you, thank you. <laughs>